<laughs> there we go. Hello, friends. What is up? Welcome back to the stream. How are we? Jack, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. How are you? I got my coffee. Hopefully everyone's good. <laughs> Happy Sunday, friends. How are you? Hopefully, let me know if you can see me. Let me know if you can hear me. All the things. I also want to point out my very cute sweater that I got from my friend's apparel brand called Carmico. Definitely check it out. Carmico. Hello, Brian. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Good morning. Mishma Shop. Hello, hello. Sam. Hello. How are you? Sophie, hello, welcome to the stream. How's everyone's, how's everyone's Sunday? Playing 7th Citadel while watching. Wow, what a very different game from the game that I'm going to be <laughs> playing. <laughs> Sounds great, perfect. Uh, here's some coffee. Heck yeah. I got my coffee. I got my coffee sweater. I have actually matching pants as well. So cute. All right, so I am going to be playing River Valley Glassworks today and I'm going to be playing this solo, which I'm very excited about. Um, I, or this video is, or this stream is sponsored by All Play. So a huge thank you to All Play for sponsoring today's stream. I'm really excited because I don't think there's a lot of coverage yet on the solo mode of River Valley Glassworks. So I feel like I'm like one of the first people to kind of be showing off the solo mode. So I'm very excited about that. I will say I do have um, prototype components. I did have to print off the like, um, like AI basically in the final version of River Valley Glassworks, which they actually just recently announced that they are no longer doing, um, what are they called? Uh, goals, stretch goals. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot what the word was. They are no longer doing stretch goals and they decided to just unlock all of the stretch goals into one like free expansion that they're going to be coming out with. So, or that is going to be included in your pledge of River Valley Glassworks. So, um, yes, all five of the different AI opponents are going to be unlocked. And pretty much what is going to happen is the opponents are just going to be on the back of the player boards. So this is a normal player board that I got for um, my prototype, but just know that this would be like the player side and then you would flip it over and have the AI opponent side for the solo mode. And each of the different characters, so the first one that I'm going to be doing is Otto Snugs. Um, each of them are going to be a different difficulty as well as they're going to kind of play slightly differently um, with how they're going to be like taking their glass tiles and stuff like that. And then also along with the solo mode being unlocked, all of the different little mini expansions. So there's a bunch of different kind of small modules that you can add to the game. Um, they have like, what are all of them? There's like assistance, there's um, equipment, there's like a bunch of different cards that you can add in that do different things in the game. Um, and all of those have been unlocked. So, uh, yeah. Hello, I'm playing Black Rose Wars Rebirth. Nothing like what you're playing either. Oh my goodness. Um, so excited for this stream. River Valley Glassworks is my current favorite on BGA. Sophie, that is awesome. I've been really enjoying it on BGA as well. Um, good morning, Jenna. Still waking up from the Foster the Meeple game -thon. Oh my goodness. I was in and out of that stream all day yesterday, and Jeff and Jamie are wonderful. And like just the fact that they did that stream, a full 24 hour stream, just like good for them. Like, round of applause for Jeff and Jamie, because that is insane and they are awesome. And it was a lot of fun. Um, I just started turn based of uh, Riverlight Glassworks on BGA, so need your tips and tricks. Oh, I will. I'll try to help you out. Timbo, hello, hello. Uh, hey, Jenna, liking the chill coffee vibe. Always the chill coffee vibes. That is my personality. 
chill coffee vibes. That is, that is me. <laughs> Hello, Terry. Hi, Jenna and everyone. Just chilling here in the UK today. Oh my goodness. Hello from the UK. This game looks so cute. Backed at highest tier because I couldn't resist it. The like highest tier founders edition looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Hello, Monica. Welcome to the stream. I've been so excited to see your play or you play solo. I've been waiting to see what the solo mode is like before I decide if I back it or not. Well, I'm glad I am able to show it off today. Like I said, I am showing off like a prototype version of it, but um, I feel like the gameplay is going to be exactly the same. Uh, nothing really is going to change with that. Um, more so the, the components of the um, solo mode for sure. I buckled and went in on this, even though my wallet doesn't agree. Uh, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? This game reminds me so much um, of the Emmett Otter movie. Aw. Tell me someone else knows that movie. I don't know what that movie is, Sam, but it sounds adorable. When is your 48-hour live stream, Jenna? <laughs> Gotta one-up Foster the Meeple. Oh my god. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Honestly, like, I could probably do it. We could probably do, like, a full weekend of live streaming. I just wouldn't live stream over overnight. I feel like that's a little bit crazy. Um, so I would, like, stream during the day on Saturday, take a break, sleep on Saturday night, and then come back on Sunday morning. Uh, but 48 hours is a long time. Mmm, coffee. You need to go make a cuppa. Yes. Do it, Monica. Go make some coffee, and then we are going to chill, hang out, and play some River Valley Glassworks, which I will say that I think I'm going to play it twice. Um, I don't know how long each game is going to take. I feel like when I played it solo off stream, it was very quick, but you guys know how I am with talking on streams, so I don't know how quick I'm going to be able to go through it then, but we will see. I'm going to pledge all in um, as a glass maker. I can't skip out on the glass pieces. That is so cool, Jade. That's really cool that you're a glass maker. Just go for 30 to beat him. Oh my goodness. 25. <laughs> 24 and a half hours. <laughs> uh, being a BS component dropper. I fear the glass components. Well, Monica, they did actually um, post on one of their updates, they posted a drop test and it's not gonna break. Kind of picture it as like if you dropped marbles, marbles are made out of glass, but you can actually drop marbles and they're not gonna break. Um, obviously, if you like, you know, forcefully chuck it at the floor, yes, maybe it will. But if you're just dropping it onto the floor, like off of the table accidentally, nothing, nothing's going to break. So I wouldn't worry too, too much about that. I feel like it would just, it would be as much of a risk, like breaking an acrylic piece as it would a glass piece for sure. All right. Shall we get into it? I think we shall. Um, so I will be, like I said, playing this twice. Um, the first opponent that I'm going to be going against is Otto Snugs. He is the one that, you know, is recommended you play first because he is the easiest out of all of them. Um, and then I'm also maybe going to try to play Rosie. So it's kind of funny because I am playing Rosie as my character. So we might be doing Rosie versus Rosie. Um, so that'll be fun. But yeah, we're going to start out with Otto, see how that goes. And then we will move on to another one if we have time. Um, but yes, basic kind of gameplay of uh, River Valley Glassworks is that you are going to have um, glass in your little satchel here, which you start with three and you can have up to a max of five in your satchel. The AI is not going to have a satchel. They're not going to, well, actually in the final in the final version of um, Rivi Rivi oh my goodness, Rivi Valley Glassworks, River Valley Glassworks, this end game track here is actually going to be on the backside of one of the satchels. So technically the AI is going to have a satchel, but that's not going to be for holding their glass. That's going to be for their like end game. So once they have three pieces of glasses in their, or three pieces of glass in their satchel, then that is when 
they are going to uh, end the game. If not, it's going to be when you have 17 pieces of glass. Dice Tower has experienced marbles uh, coming by mail and they were broken? Really? Oh my goodness. Also, I am being sensible. Don't, don't toy with my FOMO. I'm so sorry. Yes, maybe, you know. <laughs> Hello, Tim. Welcome to the stream. Love the components. Yeah, they're very pretty. Okay. So each of the AIs are going to have some sort of different way that they're going to be getting um, glass from the river. So auto here, it says location preference, location with the most pieces if tied um, closest to the lake. So whenever auto is taking glass, he is going to be taking from the spot with the most pieces. Um, if there is a tie, which obviously there's like two here, two here, two here, he's just going to take from the location that's closest to the lake, which this is the lake here. And then whenever he takes them, we're going to take that piece of the lake. We're going to move it to the back, push it forward, and then add more glass to the river. So that is what um, Otto is going to be doing. And then he has a little bit of a glass placement, um, like the the order that he wants them placed in i guess um so we're going to be looking at that based off of where he is going to be adding his glass here whenever i place glass onto these spots that have a shape that is um the spot that i'm going to be adding a piece of glass to um so that's gonna kind of be representing him placing his glass into the river um so that's going to be what we're going to be doing there so if i did place a glass onto this one here I would then take a glass out of the bag and place it onto the jelly bean spot of the river. Um, I call them jelly beans. I think they call it something else. Um, <laughs> can you explain how to know the number of glass to populate on the ribbons, or river, <clears throat> river sections to start? So I don't know if you guys can see, but there are little rocks at the back of each of the sections of the river. So this is how many pieces you're going to start with. So this section has one rock here. This section has two. So we're going to start with two there. This section has two. This section has one. This section has two. And this section has one. Um, those rocks also represent how many is going to be placed um, when a section of the river is uh, brought back. So for example, if I took this heart from here, I would take this section of the river I'd put it to the back, whatever this tile here that we are now pushing the new tile against, that's going to be how many um, pieces of glass are going to be um, repopulated onto this piece. So it's actually when you're starting the game, it's the rock that is printed on each of the tiles. But when you are replenishing the tiles, it is the one that is adjacent to it. So the one that you're pushing against, that is the uh, amount that you're going to be replenishing. So. That is how you know how many pieces of glass to add, whether that be at the beginning of the game or when you are replenishing. Um, there's always going to be five in the lake. Whenever I run out or I'm getting close to running out of glass in my satchel, I can decide on my turn, instead of taking something from the river, I can take from the lake and add to my satchel. So whenever you take from the lake, you do have to take four pieces. You can decide to do this whenever you want, but you have to take four pieces. So um, if you guys remember, I have a max of five in my satchel. So if I decided to take more glass when I still had two left in my satchel, I would have to take four. And because there's a max of five, I would have to actually add one of my pieces of glass to my overflow, which is not good because overflow is going to be, uh, I believe negative three points at the end of the game. So anything that's in my overflow at the end of the game is going to be negative three. Um, the AI does have an overflow. They get negative five points per piece. And this is when they overflow with their additional color because there is only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven kind of columns in each of our glass works. And there are eight different colors of glass. So once you actually fill up your entire row of seven different colors, you're going to have one color that you now do not want in your glassworks. And if you end up taking that color, um, you are going to have to put it into your overflow because you can, can't place it into your glassworks. So yes, 
Um, for general gameplay, I'm going to be taking a piece or two. You can actually decide to do uh, two of the same uh, shaped glass. You can place it anywhere on the board. It kind of represents a wild piece. So if I have two of these um, pentagons here, I could actually use this as a wild and place it on any spot here. And then when you do place, so for example, if I place this triangle, I would place it here and then I can take from any of the adjacent spots. So because this is right at the end, uh, you can't take from the lake. You're only going to be able to take from an adjacent river spot. Um, so if I place this here, I would be able to take these two from here and then I'm going to place them into my glassworks. And the way that your glassworks is going to be scoring is, if you guys can see here, you're going to be scoring for both your rows and your columns. Rows are going to be for completed rows before any empty spots. So if I, for example, had one, two, three, and then I had an empty spot, I would only score up to those three. So I would get four victory points for that row. Um, if you can fill up an entire row, that would be 22 victory points. But you're going to be going through all of the rows and you're going to be counting up your victory points for your rows. And then for your columns, you're going to be looking at your two highest columns. And then those are going to be how many victory points you get um, for your columns, which I will point out that the further to the right you go, the more victory points that you're going to get for your rows and your columns. So you're trying to kind of go all the way to the end um, and then kind of build up from there because the more you're going to get on the right side there. Who do we have coming into here? Oh, we have George. Hi, George. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? I get a bit of flashback to when my sister and I dammed up a stream uh, behind our house to wake up the morning after to see the mini flood. Oh, no. We also had a small pond where we released gummy crocs. Oh, my God. That's so funny. That's so cute, though. Uh, I lost this game to Carly a couple of days ago because I didn't know how overflow worked and <laughs> lost three points. Oh no. Yeah, George, you don't want overflow. No one wants too many of one color of glass. OMG, Jenna, the nails. Aren't they cute? I love them so much. They are fake. They are fake nails. But don't they like match the vibe of the channel? They're like board game garden nails, baby. Board game garden nails. I love them. Anyways, got them off of Amazon. Just look up press on nails and these ones are one of the first ones that come up. Um, anyways, yes, let's get into this. We are going to get right into the game now that we have done a little bit of an overview. Um, the game is going to end once either I, like I said, um, have 17 points or sorry, not 17 points. Once I have 17 pieces of glass in my glassworks or the end game track here, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit confused how that works. When I played solo the last few times, I reached my uh, 17 before the end game track. I can't figure out where in the game you are adding to the end game track. I think it might be when you go to these hourglasses. Um, I could be wrong, I couldn't figure out what it was. I have the solo like rule book here and it doesn't really mention adding things to the end game track. Um, if anybody in chat has figured it out, please let me know. Um, but yes, yes, plant queen, those nails, they're perfect. Yo, the nails, Jenna is killing the game with the nails. Thank you so much, George. Thank you so much. Um, let me quickly just make sure I'm not missing it somewhere. Because it does have like an end game. It says end game and scoring. Uh, the game ends. I cannot read that. The game ends either if you reach 17 in your inventory, which has always been the case for me or your rival satchel has three pieces. So I don't really know how the rival adds pieces. Don't need longer nails. I can drop components well enough with my swimmer short nails. <clears throat> mm. 
Aw. Hope you're having a good day, Brian. That's the other thing this game reminded me of. I want to go swimming for that lane. Oh my goodness. Funny. All right. It does say when you get to the hourglasses that Otto skips his next turn. But again, it doesn't say when to add to the end track. If there's anybody in chat from all play here, please let me know. I would very much appreciate it. When do I add to the end game track? Thank you so much. All right, so let's get this started, shall we? Um, I am always the first player in the game, so I'm going to start off the game and I have triangle and I have two of these pentagons, which I could use them um, both in order to be a wild, but I don't really want to do that. I kind of want to go here and then take one of these two. Um, so I think I am going to do that. Um, I think I will do... Let's do this blue here. Add it to here. And then I can either take from this one or this one, so an adjacent. Um, and I think let's do let's do this one here. And we will do purple here and then dark blue here. So whenever you're adding them to your glassworks, you're always putting a different color into the next row. So I or sorry, not next row, next column. So because I now have a purple here and a dark blue here, whenever I get a dark blue or a purple on a uh, future turn, I'm going to have to add it to that row or column. And then if I get a different color, I'm gonna have to put it uh, to the next one. So that is how that works. We are then going to take this that I just took from, we're gonna push it to the end, push it up. And then this one here tells me that I have to add one glass to the end here. And then it is now auto. So auto is always going to take from the spot that has the most pieces. These three have uh, two each. And then he's going to take from the closest to the lake. So he's going to take these ones here. And he's going to place orange and then uh, light blue. Yeah, light blue, dark blue. So he's going to place orange first and then light blue here. And because he placed on top of this jelly bean here, we are going to add one random piece to the jelly bean spot. And then we're gonna take this, move it forward, and then add two more pieces. That is the general game flow. Add two more, and it is back to me. Which, I think, do I want that there? So I can actually take this one if I place this here, Otto is going to take from this spot for sure on his next turn. That's going to get him another orange, another blue, and a yellow, which I think I'm okay with. I think I'm okay with that. Because if I place this here, I'm able to take from here. Where I could, no, because then he's going to take from there. Okay, I'm going to place here. I'm going to take from the jelly bean spot here. I'm going to add my two purples there. And then I'm going to add the light green here. I think this might actually be my favorite color of all of the, the river glass. I think it's so pretty. It's like a seafoam green. So I have one, two, three, four, five pieces. So I always need to keep track of how many pieces I have in my glassworks. So that's everything for me. We're gonna move this forward, push it up, and then we are gonna add two pieces of glass to this end spot here. Got two jelly beans. Okay, it is now back to Otto. He's going to obviously take from this spot here because this has the most. He's gonna add the orange to here, the blue to here, and the yellow to here. So we are now taking and adding one to the heart and one to the circle. One to the heart 
and one to the circle. Okay, and then this is going to be moved to the back, pushed up. Two are going to be added to the river. There we go. Okay, so now I probably want to start building. So I need other colors, which actually works out for me. So I'm actually going to place this triangle here. That's going to allow me to take these two. So I'm going to get a yellow and a green. Green is more common. So I'm going to do yellow here and green here like that. Okay. And then I'll move this over to here and then we'll add one piece of glass to here. Always fun with moving boards. I played Freshwater Fly yesterday that has a moving piece on its board quite similar to this. Yeah, it's very, it's like, I love the tactile feeling. I've been playing this a lot on BGA and I kind of like miss the like moving of the board and stuff, which I will add the deluxe version as well as the founder's version of this has a play mat. And then these pieces here are actually all clear acrylic pieces. So when you're actually moving these things, like the the illustrations aren't moving, it's just the the like glass is moving on top of these clear acrylic pieces. It is so cool. Love it. As Nat would say, who is winning? Um as of right now, I'd say I'm winning. Pretty good. Okay, so it's now Otto's turn. Oh, snap. So Otto is going to take from here because this bot has the most pieces. So they're actually getting two more colors. They're going to place their purple first, and then they're going to place one and two because purple needs to be placed before white. They are going to place one new piece of glass onto the diamond here, like so. And then they are going to move this all the way back to here. And then they're going to add one new piece to here. All right. Um, so for my turn, um, which I will add, I, I need to add two more because I have seven now. I do need to take from the river. So let's take, oh, I don't know. Um, it would be nice to get the green into play. So I'm gonna take the green. Um, do I have, I don't really need the purple. Let's get all the blues. So you take four and then four more gets added. There we go. Beauty. All right. So now it is back to Otto. So Otto is going to take from the spot that has the most, but closest here. So they're going to take this. They're going to put their blue here and they're going to put their, uh, whatever it's called here, their purple here. Yeah, I saw the deluxe version in the Dice Tower live stream. Oh, they're so lucky. I want to play the deluxe version. This one is still nice, I will say. Like, even just having these, like, beautiful acrylic glass pieces in a retail version or, like, a standard version is really nice. Um, shoot, I'm liking the solo mode, mode more than t anticipated. Now I think I'm going to have to back it. Madison, it is very, it's very fun. It is very, like satisfying and it's like a good little puzzle game um i really enjoy it multiplayer as well so <clears throat> it's it has a really good replayability too so okay so i will point out Otto is now going to skip his next turn so i get two turns in a row which is really nice 
Um, but before we do that, I am going to move this to the back. We're going to add two glass pieces. <laughs> one of us, one of us. Okay, so it is now me and I get two turns. So what do I want to do here? I have, I have a heart, I have a diamond, and I have this shape. Don't really want to do there. Do I want to maybe do the two diamonds? Yeah, I'm going to do, because I got to do two in a row, I'm going to do the two diamonds. I'm going to place them here. So I'm actually thinking ahead to my next turn because I can place these two diamonds into this spot here uh, which is actually the jelly bean, but because I'm placing two diamonds, it represents wild. So I could place those into this jelly bean spot. And then for my next turn, I do have this pentagon here that I can then place. Oh, shoot. No, because it's going to move. Dang it. I do have the heart, though. Okay, we're good. We're good. Just wait, guys. This is going to be a really good turn. Just, just wait. Gotta go, Jenna. Have a good stream and a great day. Uh, you two garden groupies. <laughs> I love of all of our names. Garden groupies, gardeners. I do like garden groupies, though. That's a good one, Brian. Have a good rest of your Sunday. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to place this on jelly beans. And then I'm going to take from... Oh, that's not really what I wanted. Because I want to take from this spot. Which is still fine. Yeah, 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 that's still fine. I'm going to take these. These are going to be placed in my next spot here. Like so. So I now have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is going to get moved all the way to the back. One is going to be added. Hopefully I did this right. So then now I can place this one here and then I can take these four here. There we go. This gets added, this gets added, this gets added, and this gets added. So I will say I can no longer take white. So white is the color that I cannot have. If I take any white, it's going to be going into my overflow, and that is not good. Um, but I do have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. My only issue now is I really need these two colors. And there are none of those colors out, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um... So yeah, I'm only going to be able to score the 22 victory points for this bottom row here. Uh, but that's okay. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to move this to the back. We're going to flow the river. We're going to add two pieces of glass. Boom, boom. Oh, heck to the yes. Heck to the yes. We have it right there. Okay. Um... Love the multiplayer on BGA, but Jenna sold me uh, on the solo mode. I'm glad. They did a really good job with the solo mode, I will say. I've been really enjoying solo modes where they kind of give you different solo opponents. Um, they did this in... What one did they do this in? They've done this in Wayfarers of the South Tigris I really enjoyed, where basically it's the same on the back of each of the player boards. There's a different solo AI that is going to be like doing things differently and focusing on different things. Um, so I really liked it in that. Um, also, Everstone Discovering Ignis was another one that I recently played solo that they also did like different things for each AI opponent, um, which I appreciated. It's just nice to be going against like different AI opponents, you know? Hello, Joe. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? It's going good over here. 
I rarely play board games on a digital tool, only on iRim. It's a drag with all the shuffling for the tabletop version, but I also love Sagrada, which is nice. Raiders of the North Sea too, nice. I do really like Sagrada solo. I need to play that again. 31 people watching, but only nine likes. What are you people waiting for? <laughs> Thank you, George. Guys, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying. I would very much appreciate it. And it also helps with like the video being seen and stuff. So very nice when they make the opponent in different modes. So you can start off easy and bring up the AI difficulty. Exactly. Yeah. So this one, like the difficulty kind of ramps up as well, um, which is very cool. So like right now I'm playing auto snugs where his like way of taking things and placing things is really simple. Um, but you guys will see later, like the other ones, if you look at actually they have a like solo rule book out. I don't know if they actually show each of the um, solo AIs, but I do believe they have like a picture of all of them on the campaign page. Uh, but all of them are different and they all kind of score in different ways and take things in different ways and stuff like that. So uh, yes, so it is now Otto's turn. So he is going to take from the spot with the most, which is this one here. He is going to uh oh, so this is place over, place overfill from square columns here. So this is actually going to be three victory points for him there. Um, this one's going to be placed here, and then this one's going to be placed here. Because I place this one here, we're going to add a piece of glass to the pentagon spot. It is actually going to be moved to the back, and then two more are actually going to be added to that tile. Come on, give me some good stuff. Come on, come on, come on. All right. I did need a yellow. I did need a yellow. Um, do I want to maybe take from the lake this turn? So then I have more options of what I can take on my next turn. I think I should, which I will say I'm already at 13 pieces of glass. So I can only add four more pieces to my glass works, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. Okay. We'll see how that goes. I would really love to get a few columns over here higher because as of right now, I'm going to be scoring three victory points and 18 victory points. Um, there are no more oranges, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, but if there are ties, so if I get another row here or another column up to three, I can't score the two over here and ignore this one. You always have to score. The tiebreaker is furthest to the left. So because I've built this one up high, this one is going to score if there is a tie, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. The solo mode looks so smooth. I hate feeling like I have to manage the AI. Exactly. Exactly. And like each of the solo people, like they just have this like really nice rules preference here or rules reference. Okay. So that is me. It is back to auto. Um, oh no, that is not me. I haven't decided what I wanted to do yet. I do think I'm going to take from the river. Um, I need this blue and I need like the greens and the yellows. So I think I am going to take these four here. The nice thing about taking from the river is that you kind of want to take the colors that you want to then get on future turns. Um, so you want to like take that into consideration when you're taking stuff from here. Obviously in the multiplayer game, you would want to kind of pay attention to what the other players are wanting and maybe not taking those from the lake. Um, to kind of keep them out of play of the river. Um, but that is everything for me. I am now going to go over to Otto. Otto is going to take from the most, which is this spot here. So he is going to uh, take a blue, which is going to go to here. And then he's going to take a yellow, which is going to add one. And he's going to take a blue, which is also going to add one. So He's going to add one to Pentagon and Jelly Bean. Hello, Carly. Welcome to the stream. 
pentagon jelly bean. So this one would move, but it's already at the end. So he's then going to just add two more to here. Okay. All right. Ooh, I need this one. I absolutely need this one right now because this would then add to here, here, and here, which would get me another 22 victory points. Heck to the yes. Fun fact, everyone, Carly and I have played uh, this on BGA. Not a ton together. How many times did we play this together, Carly? Like three times, maybe? Three or four times? I forget. We need to play it more. Aw, thanks for the reminder. Forgot to hit that button. Thank you, Timbo. I appreciate it. It's good with lazy AIs where there's not much to work to do. There's not much work to do to handle them. Both Sagrada and Fresh Fly, um, Freshwater Fly are lazy. Yeah, I do love a good lazy soul emoji, you know? That's honestly what I'm like kind of going towards these days is I want a solo mode in a game that I can just take out and play really easily. Um, I love that. <laughs> she can tell people how she crushed me in this game. <laughs> Hello, Ryan. Welcome to the stream. Okay. So, like I said, I absolutely need this here. Which I can do, I can do. But I do have to do it in a not great way, which is that I have to do either those two or these two. I think I'll do these two. So I'll have to use two triangles in order to make it a, um, whatever it's called, a wild. I'm going to place it onto this triangle spot in order to take from the jelly bean. That's going to get me one here, one here, and one here. Whoop, whoop. We're going to move this to the back. And then we're gonna add one to here. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <gasps> so I can only take one more piece. No. Okay, that's fine. Um, Otto is going to take from here. This one is gonna be added up here. This one will be added here and this um, overfill from eighth color. So they're not going to get any of those. So this is not great. This is not a great situation here. So they are going to gain 12 victory points from their overflow, but that's okay. Um, so they are going to add this yellow, right? So triangle, they're going to add to the triangle there, but they did take from the triangle. So we're going to move that to the back. We're going to add two more. Boom. All right. So how do I want to do this? So I can only add one more piece. Uh, ultimately, I think my best option If I got a dark blue, I could place it here. Because regardless of what I add here, I guess I could add a purple. If I add another purple, that'll get this four points instead of three. If I add another blue for this row here, I'll get six instead of three. So that'll be three victory points. Even if I add to one of these, I'm still going to have to score one of these and this one because I'm always going to have to tie break with this purple one over here, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but I could also, no, I cannot. There's no blue, so I can't get that color. All right. I will just take a 
I'll put these two jelly beans. Okay, I want to try to make it so they don't get any more victory points. I don't want to get any more into here. If I let him take this one, that's not going to be good. But I think he's just going to get that one regardless. Because that will get him another six victory points for adding this one, and then another six for adding these two into their surplus. Ugh. No, sir. You're not allowed. Um... I guess I could just do this. Put those there to represent a heart. Even though I have a heart here, that's going to make it so that he's going to take from this spot instead of here. And then I will take this one and I will place this here. And that is 17. I believe the AI still gets one more turn. So I'm going to move this to the back. Okay. We're going to add two to here. And then the AI is going to take this one here. He is going to get three more victory points for this one. Nothing for this one. And then this one will get added here. So that's it for that. I do believe the AI gets one more turn. When you reach 17, the end of the game is triggered. But can you physically have more than 17 on your board? at the end um i guess you could i do believe that you can i think it's just when someone hits 17 or more um so yeah i could have taken more couldn't i have but i think that would have messed up <clears throat> my scoring though so maybe it's best that i did that i don't know i definitely could have taken more um i do believe I wonder if I ended up taking this if that would have gotten me more victory points probably it's okay though but yes I do believe that when like you trigger the end by having 17 but you can have more than 17 all right so that is everything for my first game here we are going to tally up our points so I here have two full rows so I got 22 plus 22, so 44, 44 plus my two highest columns. Does that mean that I have to not do this one? I have to do both of these? No, that's the worst. Maybe that was the worst thing for me to do. Dang it. Because instead of being able to get 18 points for this one, I only get six and three. Oh, no. Jenna, what were you thinking? Dang it. So I got 44 plus three plus six equals. So I got 53. I don't have any negatives in my overflow here. So I got 53. Um, so then, everyone remember 53 for Jenna. For scoring for the AI, they're going to score by uh, length of rows. Ooh, so they do get 22 plus 16. 22 plus 16. So they have 38. They do not score for columns. They do score for their surplus plus their waste, which they have none in waste, but they do have 38 plus... 5 times 3, so 15, plus 15. No. No. We tied. How is this possible? What is the tiebreaker for playing against an AI? Oh no. Did I count that right? They have 22 
plus 16. They didn't get a third one here. So because this is empty, they don't even score for this column here or this row, sorry. Um, so really it's just 22, 16, and 15. Yep, the leftmost column score. 53 v 53. Is there a tiebreaker? Hmm. I can't see any tiebreaker. <laughs> tiebreaker is you win because Team Jenna. Heck to the yes. Didn't you say you got 54? No, no, I got... Sadly, I got 53. Because I got 22 plus 22 is 44. 44 plus 9. Is 53. Sadly, it's 53. Um... Oh, that sucks. Why did I put this one here? That ruined my entire plan. Okay, well, I tied with Otto. But we can move on to now playing Rosie. So we're going to do Rosie versus Rosie. So that was Otto, the most simple of the AIs. We're going to move into Rosie here, which Rosie does have a placement... Um, like her placement is different and then also um, she is going to score like more here because she's also going to score for her rows which with auto auto did not score for rows or sorry columns um, so Rosie is going to score for length of rows she's also going to score the uh, highest pink on two rows and then she is going to do surplus as well as her waist so, let's put all these away. <laughs> this is all coming up rosy then. Yep. Ah, yes. The dope nail rule. <laughs> you forgot to carry the one for having dope nails. Hell yeah. Thank you all so much for the nail love. I've been like recently becoming obsessed with having like nicer nails i don't know i feel like it just makes me feel more confident you know and like whenever i was filming videos before and like my nails were just like short and just not nice looking i feel like filming board game videos you have to have like somewhat nice nails so i try you know giving you all the the good nails. Morning, everyone. The tiebreaker is to play again. Hell yeah, Steph. Hello, Steph. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? Steph, were you just as jealous as I was uh, when they were posting that they were playing on Mars? We have a friend group uh, and some of them got together yesterday and played on Mars and I was very jealous. Which, like, I will say, I, I could have gone if I wanted to. Um, but I decided to stay home because I am leaving on Tuesday for almost a week. So I wanted to spend time with Francis. So. All right. So we are now going against Rosie, like I said. <laughs> Having long nails makes me feel powerful after I relearn how to use my nails yeah honestly like it it is a struggle the first few hours of putting on fake nails you're like what is happening why don't i know how to use my hands <laughs> jen if you need a good nail glue the glamnetic one lasts like way too long to be healthy lol <laughs> but they sell a remover i've seen that i actually <clears throat> i've been kind of wanting to order from glamnetic because I've heard good things. I had one set of Glamnetic nails and they have like a specific nail glue that's like a like a paint on nail glue, right? Um, I actually purchased a paint on nail glue from Amazon 
And it's working pretty well so far. So that's good. Oh man, I need to have good nails to play board games. George, only if you're filming your board games. Do you film your board games, George? How many nails is Jenna gonna lose playing this game? None, Steph. Because these babies, they are going strong. I just put them on two days ago. And usually my nails last a solid like two to three weeks. So they're going strong. I'm hoping they will last all of my trip as well. Um, so yes. All right. I think uh, <laughs> Carly just messaged me. <laughs> we are the same person, Carly. We are the same person. All right. I wish we lived closer, Carly, because I feel like we would be just hanging out all the time. Well, long nails, that is. What, what are you saying, long nails, that is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking to George. That's the reason I don't film my games, that and another thing. <laughs> if you want to borrow on Mars, I have a copy. Ooh. I am going to this like retreat thing this weekend or this coming week slash weekend. Um, and Eagle Griffin Games is one of the like publishers that are going to be there. So maybe I'll be able to play on Mars this coming weekend. Um, but yeah, I'd be down to play. All of a lot of my friends have been wanting to play it as well. So some I, I guarantee someone will play it with me at some point. It kind of scares me, though, I will say. All right, so let's re replenish I wasn't that jealous when they said they were going to play on Mars on the floor but then they fit it onto the table lol but it's all good because we can play cat's copy and Aiden can teach us exactly <laughs> okay so we're putting one two three four five pieces of glass into the lake and then we're looking at these rocks on each of these tiles here. We'll put one there, one there, one there, one there. Oh no, nope, two there, two here, and two here. All right. <clears throat> All right, so then let me quickly just make sure. So Rosie, Rosie has a location preference. So her location preference is the most unique colored pieces if tied closest to the lake. Okay. Um, so the glass placement, we have kind of a different glass placement. And then when a piece is placed on any of the shape icons, draw a random piece and place it on that symbol's location in the river. When a piece is placed on the uh, hourglass, Rosie skips her next turn. And then, like I said, Rosie is going to score for the length of her different rows. She's going to score highest pink on two rows. And then she's going to get three points per piece in the surplus and negative two for waste. And I will say she only has six uh, columns. So she's probably going to reach that um, like waste part of it uh, earlier. So this is place overfill from uh, square columns, seventh and eighth color here. Okay. Okay. So any that she has overfill from these two columns are going to go here. And then also any of the two colors that she can't place are also going to go here. And then this is going to be overfill from these first four columns. All right. On Mars is going to be the game I force my friend to buy me next week. Nice. Or you can uh, can come up to Canada and play here, George. Yeah, George, you should, you should just come to Canada. I could if I ever get my passport. Get on that. Come on, George. Time to head out. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. Thanks for the playthrough, Jenna. Thank you so much for joining Madison. Have a good rest of your Sunday. 
Hopefully it is good and cozy and lazy and all the best things that every Sunday needs to be. Appreciate you. Okay. <clears throat> so it is now me. Okay. So. What colors do I want to focus on here? It's always nice when you're playing River Valley Glassworks, really look at the different colors that are available, um, even if in the lake as well, um, because those are going to determine kind of the, the rows and the columns that you can build up. So I do start with three here. Excuse me. All right, <clears throat> so I have a circle, a triangle, and a heart. Circle could get me these two, which would be pretty nice. Triangle could get me this or this, or heart could get me this. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna use my circle. I will say if I do that, Rosie is gonna take from this spot, which is fine. Uh, I'm gonna take these two. So I'm gonna have a green and an orange. I'll do orange for the first and green for the second. I don't think I've added yet though, um, or yet, uh, that there are different colors of rarity. So you guys can see this little chart here. Let me zoom you into my thing here. So you have this little chart here. So the most common colors, so there's gonna be more of these pieces of glass in the bag, um, are white and purple. And then it goes down to dark blue and light blue. We have dark green and light green, and then we have orange and yellow as the most rare. Um, if you are playing with five players, you do add in a black as well, which is kind of in the middle of the rarity. Um, but yes, we don't have the black obviously because we're playing solo. Um, all right, so that is me. I'm gonna move this to the back and we're gonna add two pieces. There we go. Rosie is going to prioritize most unique pieces, most unique colored pieces. So she is gonna take this because there's three different colored pieces and she's going to place them in this. So she's gonna do white, then blue, then green, like so. We are gonna add one to jelly bean and circle. One to jelly bean. One to circle, okay. And then she did take from the circle, so that's gonna go to the back. And we're gonna add two more there. All right, so it's back to me. I need just more colors in general. So do I have access to that? No, I don't. So I can only go on a heart, which is all the way up here, or a triangle, which is here. Not great, not great for me. Um, just to get further, I think I'm going to do triangle here and I'm gonna grab this yellow. There's no yellows anywhere else, but this just gets me further to the right to start building up these further columns because I think that's what I'm gonna try to do this turn or this game is I am going to try to get all of my higher columns over here. Okay, so we're gonna add two to here. Oh, there's a yellow, look at that. Good evening, guten, oh no, <clears throat> guten abend, guten abend, from Germany. Thanks for your content, aw, Tanja, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Hello all the way over in Germany, thanks for joining. Thanks all, have, uh, have to head out, enjoy Sunday everyone. Ryan, thanks so much for hanging out, appreciate you. Hope you guys have a good Sunday. Okay. So it is now Rosie's turn. She is going to take the spot with the most unique. So she is going to take these three here. This jelly bean is going to be placed here. And then she's prioritizing blue, 
here and then green here. That is going to make her place one on the diamond spot here. This is gonna get moved, pushed, and then we're gonna add one to here. Okay. Um, so I only have a heart. So I could actually place this heart onto here. That would then get me these. Which I think would be okay. It would get me more to the side. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to add my heart here. I'm going to take these two. And I'm going to do... Because currently I can see... Actually, there's the exact same amount of both of them. So maybe I'll do... Light green and then blue because blue is more common, slightly more common than the green. Okay. Take this, move it, push it. Let me make sure I'm still remembering to count up my tiles. So I only have five. I'm kind of taking it, taking it slowly here. And then I am adding two pieces of glass here. Okay. Um, so now it's back to Rosie. Again, she's going to take from the spot that has the most unique, she's going to take these three here, which actually helps her quite a bit. She gets this green here, she gets the light green here, and she gets the blue here. So I'm going to add one to the heart, and that is it. Plate sat there. This get moves to the back. And then we're gonna add one piece of glass to here. Okay. A bend is pronounced a ben. A ben. Okay. Thank you so much, Jack. Appreciate it. Is this game is this game two? It is game two. We are now going against Rosie, Reggie. We have Rosie against Rosie. I will say she is a three star instead of a one. So she's a little bit more complicated. Um, ooh, I've been playing this on VGA and was curious about the solo gameplay. Chloe, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to kind of feature the solo mode. I feel like there's not, actually, I don't think there's any solo mode like content out yet. Um, I do have like prototype stuff here. So just to make you aware of that. Um, but basically, each of the solo modes, each of the characters is going to be on the backside of the multiplayer player board. So I do have the Rosie's player board here. In the final production copy of this, this AI version of Rosie will be on the back of Rosie's player board, just to let you know. Um, but I've printed it out here. And each of the different solo characters um, are going to play a little bit differently and score a little bit differently. So we are now playing Rosie. We already played Auto, which Auto is the one that you uh, kind of play for your like first game. He's like very simple to play, um, but yes, that is everything for Rosie. It is back to me. I'm kind of, oh yeah, I have to take from the lake. I have no more glass in my satchel, so I do have to take from the lake, and I would really love to get in these two spots, I would love to get the purple and the blue, the dark blue, because I see a lot of purple and blue here. Um, the only thing is, again, I cannot get white. So this would be off and this would be off. Um, so I really would love to get this one here. That would allow me to add like a purple here and then a blue here. And then I can start building up my blue and my purple columns. Um, that would be really nice. But I could also try to get maybe no purple and do white and blue because there is more white in here. That could be another option. So I am going to take, um, I'm not going to take this orange. I'm going to take these four. The reason why I don't want the orange, I, I actually probably should get the orange because that would then allow me to start another row. 
What is the correct strategy here? I don't know. Um, do I maybe want instead of the green? Yeah, maybe I'll take the orange instead of the green. Put those in my satchel. And then we put four more. Good morning, best at Star Trek. How's it going? There we go. Isn't the player requirement eight plus? Uh, what that makes the gameplay seem very light, doesn't it? Uh, player age, I mean. Um, I think it's ages, yeah, ages eight and up. Um, honestly, the game is a pretty, like, for gameplay, it is very simple, but I feel like it's very similar. A lot of people have said this already, um, but it's a very similar kind of uh, feel as, like, an Azul, or if you guys have ever played... Um, Vivid Memories is a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more, like, brain burning stuff in that, but just the really uh, simple but replayable and, like, it's easy gameplay, but very deep in strategy, um, similar to Azul. So, uh, yeah. If you're not into that sort of game, like if you don't like Azul, if you don't like, um, like Cascadia or, um, what other like simple puzzle games do I have? Um, like Sagrada as well is pretty similar to this in a way where like you're just drafting something and then doing some like placement of things to score in different ways um it's definitely not going to be something for you if you don't like that sort of thing and if you're into more heavyweight games um but has great replayability and i honestly can continue to play this over and over again and i just i really enjoy the gameplay of it so yeah definitely more puzzly light game Gots to go now. Enjoy your upcoming Eagle Griffin retreat, Jenna. Timbo, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm going to be going to a thing called Adam. I'm leaving on Tuesday, so in two days. And I'm going to be playing a bunch of Eagle Griffin games. Um, also, Queen Games is another publisher that is part of Adam as well. So I'm going to be able to play some Queen games too, which is really exciting because I don't think I've ever played any Queen games. I think the only one I've played is Luxor. Um, on BGA, which I really enjoyed that one, but there are so many queen games that everyone talks about. Um, there's like Marrakesh, Hamburg, um, there's like all of the different like city games that they have um, that I'm really excited to try out. So queen games as well. And then also Inside Up Games, um, which they are the publisher of Earth. Um, they are soon coming out with Abundance, which I do actually have a copy of the Abundance expansion here with me um, at my house. So that's really exciting. And I'll be able to play that during next week as well. Um, and they have a bunch of other games as well. Draft and Write Records, which I'm excited to play. Um, so yeah, it'll be a fun week. I'm excited to take you guys along because I will be doing some content there as well. But yeah, thank you so much, Timbo. Have a good rest of your Sunday. All right. So... That is everything for me. It is now Rosie's turn. She is going to take from this spot here and she was going to add one here, one here, and one here. That's actually gonna add quite a bit. We're gonna have one in poly, polygon. Is that a polygon? Is polygon a, I feel like polygon sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> so we're gonna add one there, triangle and circle, okay. Triangle, circle, there. Ah, shoot. That was the worst thing to have added there. Dang it. So I'm gonna push this to the back. We are going to add two to this last tile here. And then now I have to decide what I wanna do here. Dang, that sucks. This sucks because I can't really take this without losing victory points. Poly equals many. <laughs> also, polygon is many sides. Okay. <laughs> so I was going to take this one because it was like that. But now that there's a white, these are the three colors that I'm missing. And I only have two spots. So I could either place these two and the purple or these two and the white, or I could place these two. That would get me six negative victory points. So really don't wanna do that. 
I could just leave that for Rosie. But like having all of that is really nice. And is it worth it to get negative three victory points to kind of build up this over here? Honestly, I think so. So I think I might be crazy. I think I might be crazy and I might, what do I want Rosie to get here? I don't want her to get white. Maybe I give her, if I give her blue, So if I put this here, I take these. One of these are going to give me negatives. Let's see. I think I'm going to put purple in negatives. And then I'm going to do white and then blues here. Ooh, actually, Rosie's not going to take this one because she prioritizes unique colored pieces. There's only two unique colors here, whereas there's three here. Oh, so I actually can get that one possibly on. Oh, never mind. I can't. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, yeah, you're right, Steph. Porygon. Is it Porygon? Maybe you mean Pentagon? Yes, definitely Pentagon. <laughs> I definitely meant Pentagon. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in my glassworks. This one doesn't count towards the uh, amount. This goes to the back. Okay, and then we're gonna add one to here. All right, so unfortunately I can't take this one Oh, but Rosie is going to take this here. She's going to add this to here. She's going to add the yellow to here, and she's going to add the blue to here, which is good with me. Um, she is going to skip her next turn, which actually kind of helps me. I'm going to push this here. We're going to add two to the back. Okay. So it is now me. Um, I don't have two of the same. Dang it. I don't have two of the same to be able to place here. I also don't have a jelly bean. So I have two turns in order to make Rosie take something different. Because <laughs> I want this. Because this is going to get me a lot of freaking victory points. If I can get those three blues, that'll go one, two, three. That'll get me 35 victory points for filling up the like last section here, which would be a ton. So I really want to get this one. So I want to try to avoid Rosie from getting this. The nice thing is that this only has two um, of the like different colors. So if I can get her to take something else, that would be great. I'm definitely not placing this. I don't think I'm going to be able to make her take something else. Dang it. That makes me so sad. Oh, but I think I might be able to get myself to take this before she can. Okay. So. I'm going to place this here. That's going to allow me. No, 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 no. I'm going to place this here. Yeah, I know. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. That's going to allow me to take this jelly bean here. I'm going to place that here. That's going to add one more. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This gets moved to the back. That makes it so this one gets pushed next to that. Ha ha ha. Look at me go with this strategy. She's skipping her next turn, so it's now me. I take this one, I place it here, 
I take all of these, baby. Hand them over. Thank you so much. Give me all my blues. Woohoo! Look at me go. Oh, and then I also have this one. Oh, dang. That's great. This is this is good situation for me. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I can only get three more pieces of glass. But that was a great freaking turn. Actually, two turns because I got two in a row. Okay. Add two glass to here. And then Rosie is going to take two different colors. And her tiebreaker is that she's going to take from the closest to the lake. Um, so I think it's this one because this one has two, this one has two, this one has two. So she's going to take this one, which I think these actually both go into her negatives because she, these are the two colors that she doesn't have or two of the three that she doesn't have. Is there? No, these are the two that she doesn't have. So the purple and the orange are going to go into her negatives. Heck to the yes. Whoop, whoop. Hello, Vincent. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? I keep seeing this game everywhere. I love the pieces and want to eat them. <laughs> Honestly, they look delicious. They do look delicious. Hello, Foglight. How are you? Foglight, I saw your comment on my, my breakout con vlog. Why didn't we... I didn't see you one time. Did you see me at all? Because you should have come and said hi. Because I wanted to... I want to play games with you still. How are you, by the way? How's it going? Okay. So AI took this. Rosie took those. So it is now my turn. I'm going to add one to here. All right. So... Ultimately, I would love to get more white. And I could even get an orange if I wanted. Um, oh, but actually, I don't have much of an option here because I only have one. So what I'm actually going to do is I am going to, I'm going to take from the lake. So I'm going to take these three. Um, and then what shape is best for me? Probably heart or hexagon, honestly. Heart and hexagon. Doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to take the heart because it's cute. So I do have two circles and I have two hearts, so I can use those as wilds, which is really nice. Uh, just like some of the pieces in Honey Buzz. Yeah, mm, Honey Buzz pieces. Uh, I am well, thank you. I know I didn't see you either. I wasn't sure you went. Maybe I. Oh, are you going to Clarion Con too? Yay! I'm so excited. That makes me really happy. It's good to know. We definitely need to meet up and we definitely need to play some games. Okay? Yay. I'm so happy now. Okay. Um, so that's everything for my turn. I do need to replenish the lake. One, two, three, and four into the lake. Rosie is going to go. She's going to take, oh, so there are three different spots again that have two different unique colors. So she is going to take the closest to the lake. And this actually helps her a lot because she is going to place this here that's going to get her 12 victory points. And then this here that's going to get her 20. That is a lot, but I do get to add one to the diamond and one to the jelly bean. One, two, jelly bean, one, two, diamond. I'm gonna take this, push it to the back, and then we're gonna add two to that piece, okay? So I only have space for th three more. Or I guess I am going to trigger the end in three more. Um, but what do I want? What colors do I want? And what colors do I want to avoid? I want to avoid purple. So we're not going to take from there and we're not going to take from there. I would love to get this one here. 
Am I able to get that one there? Do I have a diamond or a jelly bean? I do not have a, gi a diamond or a jelly bean, but I do have two circles or two hearts. So let me use my two circles. I'm gonna put them on two. If I put them on jelly bean, that's the one that the AI is gonna take. I'm gonna put them onto diamond. Well, I'm also avoiding the blue now as well, I will say, because I can't fit any more blue. So I'm gonna put them there and then I'm gonna take from here. That's gonna get me that there as well as this here. Okay, so that's gonna add one, two to my total. And then I'm gonna move this to the back. And then, add one to here okay um always games huzzah yes yes uh hello nice sunday chores day and watching you stream this game love adam hill ben pinchback and matt riddle uh they did fleet the dice game three sisters and motor city and french quarter yes i am a huge fan of them as well um i was so excited when i saw that they were or they designed this one um, because I'm a huge fan of their role and rights as well. Um, but yeah, I still haven't tried French Quarter. I really want to try French Quarter. Um, it looks great. Uh, I recently tried Motor City and I like that one. Okay, so it is back to Rosie. She's going to take the one with the most unique colors, which like I said, is going to be this one here. Um, that is going to get her quite a bit, which kind of sucks. These two are going to be overflow for this column here. Oopsie. So they are going to go into her surplus. And then purple is going to go into her negatives. And then the yellow is going to get her some more victory points, which kind of sucks. I didn't realize she was going to get so many green and yellow. I was hoping because green and yellow are more rare that she wouldn't get a ton of them. But she's getting a ton of them, unfortunately. Um, but whatever. It's fine. I feel like I'm getting quite a bit of victory points, so I'm feeling pretty confident about how I'm going to do in this game, but we will see. This is going to get placed here. And now, what do I want? I have hearts and I have hexagon. I can't get any green, so I'm not going to be able to make this row go any further. Because like I said, we are going to get the full 22 points for this row. But moving up to this one, we have an orange and then a, an empty spot or a gap. So whenever you hit a gap, that is kind of the end of your um, row. So I'm only going to score two for this row, which is a little bit unfortunate. But I am going to score quite a bit for my rows or my columns. So I am going to grab... I think I'm gonna place my heart. So I could actually place any of these two and that's gonna get the AI some negative victory points. Um, actually, you know what I could do? I think I'm gonna do that. This is gonna get Rosie more like uh, negatives if I do this. So I was gonna place one of my hearts here that would make Rosie take this here. Um, but if I decide, because that would actually get her positive victory points here, nothing for this one, and then negative for this one. But if I place these here, that actually gets her one, two, three that are going to be going into her waist, uh, which is not good. And then she is going to get positive for this one, but that's okay. So I'm going to put my two hearts here. Uh, for a wild and I'm going to take these two here that's going to place the highest one there and then I am going to place the blue here which doesn't make a difference to my scoring but I just really wanted that white one <laughs> thank you so much crimson board games I appreciate it I love them so much I'm glad you guys like them <laughs> Okay, so that's everything for me. Um, I did hit the 17 mark. So I do believe 
I, I actually don't know if Rosie gets another turn after I trigger the end of the game or not. I could actually be wrong and I could be giving Rosie like a lot of like more points or more negative points, but I'm just going to end it off with her getting the same amount of turns as I do, but it might actually be that right when or if I trigger the end of the game, um, Rosie or your AI opponent doesn't get another turn, but um, okay. So I'm going to place this one here because that is in her surplus. And then all three of these are going to go into her negatives. Ha ha ha. Get wrecked, Rosie. Get wrecked. Which I will say, I'm also Rosie. So like, get wrecked to that Rosie, not this Rosie. Looks like you can really manipulate the AI in this game. There's a lot of thinking that goes into like where you want to place things, if that makes sense. Um, so like I, I really have to like think like where I'm placing things because then that is going to actually determine what your AI is going to take. Um, and like I said, each of the AIs is going to be taking in different ways. Um, so for example, Otto took, you know, the most amount Rosie actually takes the most amount of unique colors. So if I can actually avoid her from taking a lot of something, if I like make it a lot of like two different colors, then I can like try to do that. Um, so it's a very simple rule set, but the strategy in this is very deep. So uh, they don't, or they do look nice. A manicure has been added to my to-do list. Well, fun fact, these are actually press on nails. Uh, I don't know if I've said it yet, but these aren't my real nails. These are just press-ons. Um, I've become very obsessed with press-on nails and I feel like they they look so good. They're easy. Um, I always keep glue with me. If one falls off, I just put on a little bit more glue and then push them back on. Um, last weekend at Breakout Con, there was an ongoing uh, kind of joke. Usually my press-on nails last for about two to three weeks and I was pushing the two week mark at Breakout Con. And I think by the end of Breakout Con, I had three of my nails were missing. Um, so everyone at Breakout Con was like voting for like how many nails they think I would have by the end of the con. So I ended up with seven nails at the end of the con, but uh, that's because I was pushing at the end of like my nails lives, so. Anyways, uh, that is everything for the second game here. I am going to count up my score, which I get. So we're going to go through. We're going to do uh, rows. So I'm going to have one full row, which is 22. Let me 22 plus this next row here. You're going to count up to a spot with a gap. So because I don't have one here, it's just going to be two victory points for that row. And then obviously this next row there's a gap right at the beginning, so I don't score for that. And then you're gonna go into the two highest or your two tallest columns, which I managed to get both of the end columns, which is crazy. So I'm gonna get plus 35 plus 30. So I have 89 victory points. And then I get minus three for my overflow. So that score 86 victory points, baby. That's a lot better than my 53 from the last game. So remember 86 for me. Rosie is going to score 21 because she has one full row, another 21 for a full row, and then six. So she has 21 plus 21 plus six. So she has 48 for her length. And then... Oh, this is when she might actually get more than me. Uh-oh. So she then is going to do her uh, highest two over here. So she has 48 plus 20 plus 18. Oh, I think she beat me. How? No, actually, no. She has some negatives here. Hopefully that kind of evens it out. So she now has three in her surplus so she's gonna have plus nine equals she is at 95 which i had 86 she has 95 but she has negative two four six eight ten and twelve so minus twelve yes we beat 
our evil twin, Rosie. So she ended up with 83 and I had 86. Look at us go. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I beat Rosie. That's all that I care about. Okay. So that was a better play there. I feel like I did better with the whole like strategy of like leaving my arch nemesis Rosie with uh, some bad things. Uh, check out Dashing Diva. Sounds like a totter, or toddler beauty pageant. I know, lol. They have great press-ons, but I love their gloss and glaze items. Ooh, I will definitely check that out. Thank you. Whoop, whoop, way to go. Woo. Well done, lol. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so happy with myself. That makes me extremely happy. All right. Well, let me go back to this. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, friends. We went through t two games of River Valley Glassworks. Um, like I have mentioned, this stream is sponsored by All Play. So a huge thank you to them again for sponsoring the stream. Also, River Valley Glassworks is still up on Kickstarter if you guys want to go and check it out. If it's something that you're interested in, definitely go and check out the campaign. Nightbot has been putting it into chat all streams. So there is some links in the chat to go check it out. Also in the description, if you're watching this as a video after, the link is in the description as well. So definitely go and check it out. They have three different versions of River Valley Glassworks uh, depending on your budget. So they do have the like retail standard version that I was playing with here today. I was also playing with a prototype. So keep that in mind. Um, this little track here is attached to the boards, the AI opponents are going to be on the back of the boards as well, um, and different things. This is a prototype, so it uh, is subject to change for sure. Uh, but yeah, there's standard version. There's the deluxe edition as well that has some fancy upgrades. Um, I do believe that every uh, backing or every pledge, that's the word, every pledge of River Valley Glassworks is getting a free expansion to it as well. So you have all of the different uh, solo AIs. You also have the, I think it's called River River Glass and Other Sundries, I think is what the expansion is called. So you have a bunch of different modules that you can add into the game as well to make it a little bit more crunchy if that is something that you prefer. Um, so you have like different, different sets of cards that you can add in to add asymmetric abilities. They can add in like things you can purchase to help you throughout the game. Uh, they have some like different like public goals and stuff so you can add different things to the game to make it a little bit more crunchy if that is something that you like. Um, but yeah, that is now free with all of the uh, backings. That's I keep on saying backings free with every pledge of River Valley Glassworks over on Kickstarter. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, definitely do so. It is a very fun puzzly game if that's something that you enjoy. I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I'm really excited to play it more in the future. It is on BGA, so if you guys want to go and play it over there to see if it's something that you personally would enjoy, definitely do that. Uh, I watch a lot of your playthroughs to learn my solo games. Never got here for a live one. Glad I did. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, is it Layla? Thank you so much for hanging out. I also just saw that you uh, joined the Discord. So thank you so much for joining the Discord. I'm excited to chat over there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, happy that you were able to hang out live today. Uh, nice one. Thanks for the stream. I will definitely be backing it for sure after this stream. Nice. That makes me really happy. Um, thank you so much for hanging out, Jade. Backed it as well. Love this uh Love this team. I hope they got more crunch in it for the expansions and goals. Yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, yeah, a lot of love. I like or I love a lot of their games. Oh my goodness. Jinx, Jenna. Jinx. <laughs> All right, friends. Thank you guys so much again for hanging out with me. Hopefully you have a good rest of your Sunday. I'm going to go get some laundry done and possibly film a video, different things like that. Um, heck yeah, you said my name right. Amazing. That's awesome. Okay. Glad I, I said your name right. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much again. Appreciate you. Have a good Sunday. And I will see you in 
a bit of content next week. Uh, content next week might be a little bit sparse just because I am going to be traveling. Uh, but maybe I will try to do some like Instagram stuff or maybe some like YouTube shorts or something while I'm there. We will see. But I will be getting back to like normal content, uh, consistent content after I get back. I've been doing a lot of like travel and stuff. So uh, after this travel, I think I'm not traveling for quite a long time. So that'll be really nice um, to get back to consistent uploads and doing some fun like challenge videos and stuff. I've been seeing a lot of fun challenges people are doing. So I really want to do some more challenges, maybe some more organization of my board game collection, stuff like that. Uh, some lists and all that. So yeah, I will see you guys next week. Uh, be sure to like check out, like I said, my Instagram and stuff like that. Keep an eye out for some, maybe some short form content. I'm maybe going to try next week. We will see. Um, but once I get back, I will have a bunch of vlogs of Adam up, which I'm excited about. Um, so yeah, for the 50th time, hopefully you guys have a good rest of your Sunday. I love you so much. And I will see you uh, in the next board game thing, whenever that is. Goodbye, friends. Love ya. See you later. <laughs>